Alright, we've got two packages. And while I do have one non-anime thing to show, let's just get these open. First, we'll start with the one with the things, probably Hunter Hunter 4. Well, how did I put this time? And then the UPS package with the other five things, I believe. Hmm. This adhesive feels like it does not want to come undone, so we shall go scissors on its ass. Actually, I guess this isn't really its ass, is it? This is its head. So, off with the head. There we go. Definitely. Uh, and, of course, uh, the stuff, well, this showed up when it was supposed to. That was set by right stuff. But this was everything that was supposed to arrive last week. And it turns out I made the good call of not showing it or waiting for it because Amazon decided they didn't want to see um, do anything about it until Friday. You know, that's when it's like, oh, well, we have a tracking number that doesn't show that anything ever scanned, so we're just going to assume we sent it until Friday when you talk to us. Before I got home Friday, though, they were like, oh, shit, we messed up, or something like that. They sent it out. It arrived Saturday, so it was pretty much already today. Anyways, Mario Tennis Aces, Switch game. I've been playing it, and it's fun. I'd like to say it's fun like a Mario Tennis game, but I don't really know for certain, because technically it's my first time really playing a Mario Tennis game. I'm just trying to think if there's anything here I want to really look at or comment about, but I suppose the real important thing is to just start digging in. As you can see, I held off on opening most of these. Okay, so we've got, hmm, interesting. Well, interesting because she's, I don't remember her name. She's just one of Emperor Pilaf's goonies, two goonies, goons, just goons, goonies is, what, region A, not region A and B. Good to note. But, uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember what exactly happened. Did they all get turned on because of the Dragon Ball? Or something? I don't know. Because it seemed like it was a reference to, um... Whatever. Anyways, it's interesting because Young Trunks we expect to be there, but the fact that she's here all the way on a... fourth season thing? I don't remember her hanging around a whole lot. It's a fun character design, but... Not sure I could call it good. And I'm doing a weird thing where I guess I'm piling open stuff on unopened stuff. Next up we have seven mortal sins. Which I don't know what to think about. You know, it's a bunch of ladies and okay, fine. Ooh, region A B. And uh, it looks like it's got an English dub, so I just don't know what to think about it content wise in terms of what may be in there, which is probably why I didn't opt to watch this just yet. I guess because it would have required me to open this, even though it's, it looks like a really low-hanging fruit sort of thing to try to watch. <sighs> Is that a guy or a really something girl? It's hard to tell. The outfit looks girlish, but that could just be something, I don't know. Simple DVDs, it's not bad. More people, and... You know, it, it looks like it's either harem or sexy girls doing sexy things. And see, she's prominently put at the beginning with her there. I was just counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Okay, if there's eight, and then it's not seven mortal. Seven of them are the mortal sense, and two of them are something else. Or maybe a pair of something. So anyways, the Royal Tutor. 
don't know what this is. Ooh, uh, another region AB. That's always nice to see. We've got an English dub. And even though this looks loose, it's not because I opened it, it just came that way. Now we'll get to the loose one once we get to the bottom of it. This picture looks like it's a better way of understanding what's going on here. Because it looks potentially reverse harem-esque, but that's assuming there's any girls in there at all. Or maybe these people aren't the same as these people, because that looks potentially girl, that looks potentially girl, but only potentially. I can't tell for certain. I don't know. It makes it kind of hard to guess, but I'm guessing it's uh, shoujo oriented. Maybe uh, starring a guy or something, but, you know, same way that there's a lot of things for guys that star a bunch of girls, and I don't know if this is one of those. It certainly looks neat, but Region A, Japanese with English subtitles. She's determined to become the one. Which is probably music related because I didn't read anything else. I like to be surprised. But yes. We'll just go inside. Not as anime-y for these, but still, you know, nice and music related. Might be a good show. Hard to say, because I don't know for certain and I won't know until I watch it. And even then, anyways, A Spirit of the Sun. Region A, this one has English and Japanese. This is a Made in Japan release. Interesting. Of course, that's why I made that mistake. Because one of the things that didn't arrive today, I think there were a couple of things that I would have normally guessed, but I I forgot that Section 23 is Sentai Filmworks and not made in Japan. I think I keep mixing them up because they all split off from um, ADV when it exploded. Anyways, we got that. We got probably the most notable release, but I'll have to see. I don't know. There could be other notable stuff. We have a ReZero, which as you can see, I've already dug into in order to watch. So I will talk about having watched it, but now I get to actually completely unpackage this. Uh, first, let's see. We see Region A. It's definitely English dubbed, yeah, because I already watched it. And I don't know how the English dub compares to Japanese with English subtitles, but it seemed fine to me. It's a nice shiny box. Let's begin bottom to top. So first we got Season 1, Part 1, the actual case on the inside. I never, I don't know if this is, um... Huh. That's interesting. It's like scenario design stuff. And then DVD. Interesting. So the Blu-rays have the same fish artwork, uh, if not actually the same, I would guess the same. And DVDs have the same, but it is its own thing. I forgot what I was going to say. We got a box here. This has something in it. Because this also has something in it. So I'm guessing I got a limited edition of some sort. It's one of the nice things about buying and forgetting is you don't have to remember stuff. And then uh, it becomes nice and surprising. I see a lot of characters that I've seen before. As in like I've watched it this weekend. I guess for the time being I'll keep these in here. But it looks like this is big enough such that it will hold um, part two when that comes out. And then it may also hold um, season two. Because it's saying season one, part one, season one, part two. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's more. Oh, jeez. That's a very clothy looking thing. So first of all, we have an art book of various characters. Man, it looks like there was maybe something else in there. Is this a pillow, maybe? 
trying to find the opening. I'm kind of curious. I'm not expecting anything too spectacular. Hmm. Let's actually turn the camera up so that I can fully unfold this. Yeah, I see. It 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 is um yeah, it's a normal pillowcase. That's actually pretty cool. I'm going to have to decide if I actually want to put this on one of my pillows. Well, I'll think about that later. For the time being, I think I can just fold it back up like so and attempt to put it back in the box. I don't need that since stuff, but yeah, stuff, stuff and things. Things and stuff. And I could jokingly say that that's this week's anime DVD collection update. Oh, did I actually look at both sides of this box? Because there's artwork on this side. Damn, this thing does not want to close. You know what I should do? I should take this booklet out, put it on the other side, so that I'm only wrestling with a pillowcase. And you know, pillowcases are all about soft fighting, which you don't want to throw books at people. Oh look, there is artwork on the other side. Important. Did this have anything? Nothing. Oh well. And yeah, I could jokingly say that's this week's anime DVD collection update. Oh wait, I usually try to keep this in there, don't I? Come on, get in there. If I can get this in there, then I can just slide it in with that. Let's see. But of course, the way I was piling this stuff up, of course it's not. So the other thing that arrived, uh, technically before this stuff, but is a uh, Owari Monogatari Volume 3. Which of course is kind of nice to have, and I think this is intended to be watched after Kill Me Monogatari. Which I did watch with a friend. And I, I, have, I have to decide. Am I going to watch this on my own and then maybe try to get in contact with him? That gets a little tricky to do because he's um, working night shift stuff now. So we're awake at literally different times. Oh dear. Adadadadagi looking a little aggressive. Let's see. We have a booklet of stuff. I certainly hope y'all got to see some interesting. That's actually a neat piece of artwork. But I don't open the postcard things because those are a pain in the ass to put back in, more so than the pillowcase was. Then we go here. Similar artwork. And again, with similar artwork. This is kind of what we expect, and then the universe. It all comes together. Nice. Uh, let's see, Kenka Bancho Tome. Hmm. It's called Girl Beats Boys, so I'm guessing it's about a girl who kind of can fight guys. It looks reverse Hiramish, and I'm guessing if that's not the girl, you know, because that person looks feminine enough that they could be a girl with a very uh, boyish dress on. Or it could just be um, another person that the character that they suggested is can knock out. There's a part of me that wonders, looking at this, if it could be a uh, less common reversal of the trope of guy going to an all-girls school. It's A and B. It's English dubbed. Well, I was about to put it away and didn't even look at the contents. Okay, this one kind of got me intrigued. Uh, next up, we have actually... Why don't I... 
No, let's just do all three of these for now. So this is why I'm not caring as much about the fact that this order, this week's order, is in shambles. Isn't in shambles because most of it, it seems like there's a lot of it that's um, these uh, Eastern Star Discotheque re-releases of old stuff. Although one nice thing about Eat Man here is I think Eat Man '98 was released on DVD, but I don't think Eat Man itself was, or maybe it was, and I just never got around to watching it. It was released by Disco. But here it is on Blu-ray. Region A audio to Japanese. So it's got Japanese with English subtitles. Oh yeah, we're dealing with the Eastern Stars. So I might want to peek this out of the slip cover and take off the sticker. Anyways, I really should watch the original. It, I wouldn't say it was necessarily great, but it was an entertaining watch. What I remember seeing from long ago. But yeah, um, now begins the era of um, Eastern Star Discotheque releasing a ton of stuff. Re-releasing a bunch of old stuff, mostly on Blu-ray. So, we've got these. This is kind of a basic example. This is the sort of thing where you're like, you'd probably be like, Oh yeah, I really want that. But then you got uh, Sister Princess and Sister Princess Repure. And I, I think these are called BDSD as in, like, oh yeah, actually, no, hmm, interesting. SDBD is what it says up here. 24 episodes. Huh. I didn't remember Eat Man 98 being that long. Interesting. This one says to here, huh, down there, it says a uh, 1080i high definition. What does this one say for video? 480p. So why, uh, Sis, Sister Princess strikes me as one of those titles that shouldn't be upscaled, or, but maybe it could have been, maybe it was in Japan? I don't know. You know, it's been a long time since I saw this series. About the only thing I remember about it is, as entertaining a premise as it is, it also has a sort of fake feeling to it, which is kind of interesting because Aromanga Sensei, you know, it's 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 it starts with the premise, the same sort of premise, except this one is about oh he his dad slept around or something and he has twelve sisters, whereas that one is oh well they have an adopted sister in the family. This one is just sort of like, oh, well, these are a bunch of people he doesn't know, and it doesn't really feel like he's meeting them so much as he's like, switch, time to, uh, you know, treat all these girls as sisters, and they're like, oh, we'll treat you as brother, that's maybe sort of more the stereotypical Oni-chan way of being treated as opposed to maybe anything real. Anyways, not that that's necessarily bad in and of itself, but it means that I don't remember watching Sister Princess and feeling like the um, underlying premise was a really emotional one. And I'm not sure if Eromanga Sensei did anything like that, but it's, I don't know, a weird thing to come to mind. And since I haven't watched this, in a long time, I guess now's the time to do that speculation while I'm peeling away all the layers of plastic. Because, oh my god, there's just so much. But, yeah. Interesting. The audio is Japanese with English subtitles. The other one was like that too, wasn't it? I just didn't notice. No? Mm. Did I maybe never see a, the second season? Maybe this was always on my want to watch list and I never got to watch it because it never got released, but here it is it's released. All in one disc. Jeez, oh, would I have to rewatch it in order to. What does the back say about the content? It says that. So if I were to take a guess, maybe the. Maybe this got a Blu ray release in Japan. And that's why there's Blu-ray upscaled versions here, because maybe those are direct transfers of that, but they added the audio to the first season. 
because maybe that was there. Anyways, soccer request part one, which I have to admit it's kind of a it's a name that kind of catches my attention a little bit. Country queen with big dreams. I don't know if I like the idea of a country queen. Region A only, but it does have an English dub. I'm not sure why. I guess the word quest has a strong, oh, maybe this is a good series annotation to it in my mind, and Sakura has a strong, good character thing? I don't know. Because I think of, it reminds me of Sakura Wars, or Cardcaptor Sakura, or a queen. So, literally a queen? Uh, let's see, I, I have to angle the light in order to read this. But this is Blu-ray 1, and I'm pretty sure this is Blu-ray 2, I see Soccer Quest, Part 1, Episodes, oh well. And then we've got DVD 1, which is, oh, so does that mean the Blu-ray symbol, yeah, the Blu-ray symbol's right there, the 2's right there, DVD, how very strange. Probably put this back in there. There we go. And last but not least, we have Hunter x Hunter Volume 4. This is DVD. And over there is Blu ray. And yeah, I think uh, of the stuff that didn't arrive today that could have, let's see, Grimoire of Zero. Um. I mentioned that I mistakenly thought it was something other than Sentai, so I ended up getting the premium, well, pre-ordering the premium edition of that, and of course, it's nowhere to be fucking found, whereas the original one is there, which is unfortunate because it's got an interesting name, which makes me want to watch it, but, okay, huh, they do that with the digital version of this, but let's see, there's also Clockwork something or the other, maybe Clockwork Planet, I don't know why that one didn't ship. And then there's a handful of more of uh, Eastern Star Disco Tech releases. And then I think uh, next month there's more at the beginning of the month. Oh my god, there's like $400 worth of stuff pre-ordered for July 3rd. Here we got the Blu-ray of Hunter x Hunter. And the DVD version of Hunter x Hunter. As you can see, um, they have different artwork on the inside. I'm just trying to look at stuff. It's tricky. We got, I'm, I'm not, uh, three, four. And I'm wondering if this is becoming a higher and higher priority to watch, especially as I get more of it. And if I remember where the hell I put piles of this stuff to watch, then I would have piles to watch. Because this is just the new one. I watched the old one. I don't know how much I remember detail-wise of it, but... Looks like the inserts are the same. And I don't remember if the artwork's all the same. Two, three, four. It sure looks different. Not in a bad way, but different than what I remembered from the old original series. Assuming it's the same character, use the same purpose. The general outfit is about the same. I don't know. It's weird. Huh. All right, we got a nice big pile of stuff. Here's this week's uh, 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 anime DVD collection update. Okay. Uh, what else did I do? So, I'll begin by finishing Sword Oratoria. Because I think I mentioned last week that I started watching it, and I kind of felt like it wasn't living up to expectations like I hoped, but in retrospect it makes sense and I don't know why I expected it to be different than what it was. And to reiterate, because I think that still applies more strongly in the second half which I watched, um, it's basically got 
characters mentioning similar motivations to the main character from the original main storyline, but it doesn't really establish a reason for us to be interested or excited for the motivation. It's just a generic, oh, I want to get stronger. And there are a couple characters in this that are like that, and it's unfortunate because it kind of means there's not as much attachment and you get, keep getting reminded of the main story which isn't really too bad until closer to the second half where I kind of feel like they undermined a, it a little bit. It wasn't enough to really definitely ruin it but it's a couple of things where it's like yeah this this is kind of making these crossover scenes not feel as interesting, satisfying, vis visceral, or something like that. Like, it, it, it's a little undermining, and it especially is annoying because when it ends, it doesn't really end with an explanation, just with a hanging end point, and the problem is, the kind of problems they're dealing with and talking about would be relevant to the characters in the main story, except the main story very deliberately didn't see absolutely anything from this that is related to that, which kind of means that this is sort of like, you could almost say it's sort of like the Dragon Ball Z movies, where they introduce this side thing that is so ridiculously important that of course people would have had to have noted or reacted or remembered it, but then they don't. And so it's... And so it's, it, that's not really a problem in and of itself until they tie it together into the main thing. So you can think of the Garlic Jr. saga in Dragon Ball Z as being a really good example of that, where the first movie is kind of good because it kind of goes over some of the themes that were going on with Dragon Ball Z at the time, but in a more condensed movie format and, you know, just some interesting good artwork, animation, fight choreography, but then they bring it up later and the context is a little messed up and it doesn't really ruin either Dragon Ball Z at the time of Dead, Dead Zone or Dead Zone itself, which is, and it doesn't really undermine them, but it is, this is um, a little undermined. Uh, it does undermine the original just a little bit, and then it leaves you hanging in a way where you're like, okay, well, if you are pretending that you just build story, then the, ne the next main story has to cover stuff which overlaps with that. Otherwise, you're just bullshitting us. You're trying to fit this epic storyline in between these narrow edges so that uh, certain people never get to see it. And that doesn't really work. Um... And then I guess while I was waiting for stuff to come up, I started uh, re-watching bits and pieces of the regular at Magic High. I think that's what it's called. Huh. I I'm brain farting a little bit there, but I think it was actually not a bad idea to choose to do that because um, next month there is a movie coming out of that stuff, and this has been a good reminder of the things that happened in there. And it's a bit similar to my watch of Gate a week or two ago where I'm not necessarily watching absolutely everything. I'm doing some skipping where I'm like, eh, I don't care about their home life. I kind of want to see how the schoolmates act with the main character. Then sometimes I do watch the school life or the home life stuff. You know, I pick and choose. This one I did a little less picking so there was a little more waiting for stuff, but yeah, it's fun. It, his um, stoicness is fun. The situation is fun. It's kind of hard for shows to pull it off really well. Which may be relevant to the discussion I would have about that, but let's talk about ReZero. Because when this arrived, I prioritized finishing Sword Oratoria, and then because the way I mixed things up, or I was putting off watching more Sword Oratoria because it wasn't being very fulfilling to watch. It wasn't bad. The characters were neat. The actions were neat. There was neat story ideas. But I didn't feel invested. And there was something else I was thinking of going through. But I don't remember what. I'll remember on my own, or maybe I won't. But then ReZero was a high priority because everybody talked about this one. And I don't know that they talked about it so much as characters from it were referenced, and I have to say, having watched the first core, I can actually respect that quite a bit. 
it's interesting because as a show it tends to take kind of not even polar opposite but orthogonally different concepts and things that you wouldn't normally think to try to combine and then it combines them in a very delicate well thought out well polished way and I don't want to go into more details about everything there but it seems that this applies on multiple levels through the series itself where um, they do it with the setting, with the plot, with the characters <clears throat> and it's interesting because while there's this general feeling of the storytelling being slightly different slightly unusual it doesn't feel like it moves so far out of it that you don't feel like you're being told a story there's a lot of double negatives in there so let me try and put it another way even though it feels like it's telling an irregular story that maybe doesn't follow the normal structures which I'm pretty sure it does but it kinda does a good job of not feeling like it despite that you feel like you're watching a good standard story and furthermore um, the surprising thing is, even though they mix these things together with characters in certain ways, it's doing them in a kind of clever, I'd like to say self-aware, because I think it's demonstrating, it's not demonstrating self-awareness directly to the camera. If anything, it's demonstrating that it might be demonstrating it. But it all comes out feeling like it works, like it's correct, like... There's so many examples and ideas I could talk about, but if you've never seen it, I, I don't want to spoil that for you. And if you watch it, you'll kind of understand why I'm neglecting to mention much. But, other interesting things. It was really interesting how the first episode appeared to be a double length thing. So, it was a special premiere of some sort, apparently. Um, this show had some, what I'd say, what I'd call some genuine emotion parts of it, where you kind of feel like, even though the characters, they're feeling an emotion, you kind of feel the connection and the relevance of it happening in that moment, because it does a really good job of polishing everything and leading you where you need to go in order to enjoy it. At least that's how far it's gone with the first season, or the first part of the first season. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of it, but uh, who knows how long I have to wait. Uh, next up, I decided to put Akashic Records of Bastard Magic Instructor on. I guess because, I, uh, first of all, Akashic Records is a very, it's, it's a neat word, which is, you know, why it's there, part of the title. But I also didn't expect too much of it. In the worst case, if I didn't like what I was watching, I could just switch. And it's kind of interesting comparing this to the regular at Magic High because if there's any weakness to this show, I'd say this show is actually surprising, surprisingly more okay than I thought it would be. I was afraid that it would definitely be something that I'm like, eh, this is just stupid. The problem is it's actually got things in there that are kind of interesting that it works with. Um, I'd say if there's any weakness to it, it's a tonal inconsistency, which may not be really inconsistent with what happens, but it basically means that you're watching it and I guess you're not sure what to expect from it and it's not necessarily entertaining you from that angle. So like the regular Magic High is kind of interesting because it kind of establishes that our main guy is um, a very stoic and well-organized person and you kind of suspect oh yes and he's secretly a badass and his sister's confirming that and the show is playing off alright yes he's secretly a badass and his stoicness is part of the reason why he's just not going around being a badass all the time or something like that you know there's a consistency with the character that moves from this is him being treated as if he's a normal person versus this is him doing something kind of awesome in the moment versus this is him doing something secretly awesome. You know, he's the same character through all of those. And this show doesn't exactly 
not do that. It's just that tonally, it's hard to kind of grasp onto it and ride with it. So like it, it wants to have us think that he's a he's a potentially cool guy, but it also goes really out of its way to make us be reminded that no. And this isn't something that's unusual in anime or unusual in this in particular. It's just one of those things where it doesn't it doesn't feel like it fits perfectly together with where it goes, I guess. And then it has this thing where it's switching very rapidly between two parts. It's almost like I guess if it was paced um, closer to the regular at Magic High, it may actually work out pretty well. Although it's really hard to tell if the happenings in episode per episode would necessarily um, work out. So it kind of is weird because it's got this extreme that, yeah. Overall, um, what I've watched so far isn't bad per se. You can just kind of tell. Yeah. You know, as a school uniform, uh, it's actually a really weird thing to have. Because the guys don't have things like that. Now, granted, the guys look great in guy ways, but they don't look sexy great. Which, uh, you know, the short skirt, short top idle waitress kind of look, you know, kind of does go in that sexy direction, I guess. Well, anyways, um, I'm maybe halfway through it, so I'm gonna. I'm, I think I'm gonna be able to finish watching this before I put something else on. And I guess we'll just have to find out if um, if I enjoy it, the rest of it. Yeah. Oh well, that's okay. And then I think I was gonna mention uh, Mario Tennis Aces. And I've been enjoying it so far. I've never really played the Mario Tennis games before. Maybe I was got put on a match once and I was just pushing buttons on a GameCube controller. So this was probably for the GameCube. Unless it was for the Wii and it was using GameCube controllers. I don't remember. But the real point is uh, this has a single player mode. And I don't know if they've had a single player adventure mode before. But I'm pretty much going through it. And I'm like, I've got... I've finished the second boss, which I don't think is necessarily fast progress, but I get the impression that there's only like five of them. I don't know, maybe I'll get slowed down as I continue to go. And it feels like I'm learning more about the game as I go, which means it's probably... it. You know how there's sometimes Nintendo games where if somebody plays through the single player, they absolutely completely dominate people that haven't? Uh, I think Splatoon is another relatively recent example, but this also goes way back to like Super Smash Brothers or Mario Kart. I don't know. People who played enough on their own to absorb all the mechanics and then everybody else is just, you know, trying their best but not able to do their best. Well, anyways, I can't help but feel like Mario Tennis Aces may sort of end up being like that. But, I don't know. Most of my motivation for going through the adventure mode is to try to unlock everything that needs to be unlocked so that um, if anybody wants to play something, then I'll have access to tennis courts. I'm thinking more like local. I don't, I don't really know what's going to happen. Anyways, I guess that's really all I have to talk about. I've been mostly not getting any project work done. I mean, as y'all can see, these are growing again, and these piles here are mostly growing in size because I haven't actually checked to make sure I've marked them off as, oh yes, I purchased this, oh yes, I purchased that. So I have to make sure they're marked, and then some of these are Blu-ray only, so you need to go into this pile of Blu-rays to rip, but I should really get on the DVDs, but I guess... Um, one of the hard drives in vanilla died, so there's a lot of non-anime stuff I have to rip. There's always projects. Maybe December vacation, Christmas vacation, I'll have a lot of time to myself. Maybe I'll do nothing long enough that I'll feel motivated to do something, or I'll just have too much to do. I don't know. I guess that's not y'all's concern. Y'all, have a nice week.